I'm not sure I've ever met anyone who doesn't love Chinese dim sum. Hi, I'm Jill, and today I'm going to show you how to make Chinese spare ribs in a garlic black bean sauce. But first, like and follow me on Facebook to get all my latest videos, and Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter at This Old Gal Cooks. We're going to use the Instant Pot pressure cooker and make the whole thing right together in under 20 minutes from start to finish. You want to add your dry fermented black beans. I'm using dry black beans fermented. They're soybeans. The second thing you're going to want to add is shaosun, Chinese wine. This is really great because it's a lot of flavor. So we're going to add in the shaosun right into the pot. Now we're going to add in soy sauce. All right, so you also want to make your sauce first before you prepare your your ribs because you want it to soak a little bit, the black beans, and just soften up a little bit. So we're going to do that, and I'll show you how to do the ribs afterwards. All right, so it's soaking in there. So we're going to add equal amounts of ginger and garlic. So now we're going to add some scallions, the white parts of the scallions. Those go right into the pot and we're going to add in some sugar. I'm using white sugar. You can use brown sugar if you like. So pour that right in. So I'm going to add some fresh, well actually it's jarred, but it's, it's a ground chili paste. It's a salva olek. Uh, it's not as hot as you might think it is. For this recipe we do like two tablespoons in it. It's not going to add a lot of heat. It'll balance really well. Those with the, teaspoons. What did I say? Tablespoons. Two teaspoons. Don't add two tablespoons. Your mouth will be on fire. So this is all you do for the sauce. You see how easy it is? Here's Ed. Here's Ed. Okay. These are the riblets. And this is how they come. It's basically like a rack of ribs. And they cut it on a bandsaw. You have to wash these really, really good. Because they get bone shards from the bandsaw. Right. And they get... So what I do is I bring them over to the sink and I use warm water. It's warm <laughs> it's warm enough to, to melt the fat, but it's not hot enough that it's going to start cooking the meat. Right. So the little bone shards will come off and right. it'll be, you know, nice and clean. I do want to interject something. If you are kosher or if you don't eat pork, you can use a flanken style meat and do this recipe the exact same way. So I'm going to cut these and... All you have to do is you just cut it right in between. You'll see the, oops, you'll see the the bone sections. Just cut it right in between, and you have your riblets. Okay. Just be careful you don't end up with any digits in your bowl. We made this the other day, and it was so delicious. <laughs> so he's going to take the the small bowl. It's well, got this... a little bit of salt and it's got some white pepper. I'm gonna pour that into the potato starch. Oh. Mix it around. Okay, now you're gonna put that all through the meat. You wanna coat the ribs with that really well. Faster. That's fine. And just mix it up with your hands. It's cool. All right. Now, do you know why we're coating the meat with the potato starch, Ed? You yes, I to... do. You wanna tell them why? Well, it'll help like make a slurry or a thicker sauce. You want to just dump all the meat in? You know, also with the potato starch, because it's on the meat and not mixed through the sauce, it will still come to pressure. Now for the rice, we're going to add a long legged trivet right on top and the rice with the cover on it. And I like to use the hole so that it steams nicely, but so that the stuff, the liquid doesn't, you know, splatter and get inside it. The rice is nice and white. Now we're going to lock on the lid, just like that. And we're going to come over to the front of the panel and we're going to set the timer for five minutes. And I'm going to open the lid. I can't wait. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? I'm hungry. Hungry. All right. Take that off. Ed, could you get that rice out for me, please? It's heavy. And fluff it if you like. And it's hot, too. It's hot. And the little thing hot, inside. Hot, very hot. Can you move that lid, please? Oh, sorry. And the trivet, too. And you put it there. Okay. That's great. Um... All right, so you can see there's not a ton of liquid, but there's enough. 
And as we mix it, it's going to thicken up a little bit. So the first thing you want to do before we serve is I'm going to add a little bit of sesame oil. I'm adding it after it cooks because when you cook with sesame oil, it gets kind of funky a little bit sometimes. So we want the flavor, but we don't want the funk flavor. <laughs> so about a teaspoon I'm going to add in right now and mix it through. So I'm going to add some scallions in now like that and just mix them up. And I'm also going to add some in when we serve. Now you can see there's a little bit of liquid in there. So I'm going to serve some for Ed first. You got some rice? It's beautiful rice. So I'm going to add in some of the little riblets. I'm going to add the riblets next to it, the plate of rice. Oh, I almost gave you too many, I think. All right, so I'm going to serve mine like dim sum with just a few pieces. Are you ready to taste this? Here we go. Here's yours with the rice. And I want to give you some. You want the pink or the green? I don't care. One of each. All right, so we're, here we go. Yum, I got mine backwards. So Ed's got the rice, and I've got just the little riblets. These are going to be very hot. Be careful of that bone. Oh, you put the whole thing right in? See, you're brave. I don't want to swallow the bone. I'm going to take a bite. Mm. Oh, my gosh. This is so good. It melts, doesn't it? It literally melts in your mouth. That's because there's a lot of fat on the bone, and so it helps soften it, and it's throughout the... Oh, my gosh, it's so good. It melts. It's good, huh? Yeah. How's the rice with that... Uh, the gravy on it, good. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, 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 you know, it's 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 all of the flavor and rice. <laughs> it's good. It's, I think it's, <laughs> it's like it's like putting gravy on rice or something like that. It's it's it, it works. It works. So save your trip to the dim sum restaurant. Make it at home now. You know, if you steam this on the stove, it's about twenty minutes. So the time isn't any shorter because of the time to come up to pressure, of course, and then release. But the beauty of this is, it's, it's braising right in the liquid. You can walk away and do whatever you want. You can go pet your cat who's now talking to me who wants all kinds of attention. And some dim sum. <laughs> She's not getting any of the dim sum. You know, you can do what you want. That's what's great about the pressure cooker. Just walk away. Well, I hope you, you know what I forgot to do? Oh. Dun da da da. Dun da da da. Myself. See that? Green onion. Hold it under there. That was fast. You couldn't, you had to eat it more, huh? Yeah, is that good? Not. All right, keep going. It's here. So is this dinner for tonight then? I think so. I reckon so. We've been watching Wentworth, so reckon. Visit thisoldgal.com for the complete recipe as well as many others.